Welcome back. We're going to take a look today at the other subject of our study, that great friend of Teddy Roosevelt, Booker T. Washington. In fact, when Roosevelt became president, one of the very first letters he wrote was to his friend, Booker T. Washington, over several appointments that he was making in the South. He really wanted Washington's advice on these things. He would later, of course, have Washington over to dinner at the White House to also seek his advice and really just to see him. Now, that may not seem remarkable, except for the fact that Teddy Roosevelt, who came from a Dutch New York family, was asking advice and having dinner with a man who was a former slave and who was an African American. And because there was so much racism in the country at this time, this actually caused a scandal. In fact, there's a famous story told. It's, it's rather strange how it goes, but follow along. Booker T was down south. He's actually in Florida. And it was there in Florida that he met a former Confederate colonel. And the Confederate colonel said to Booker T, you are the greatest man of our age. Booker T by this time was a famous man, had given lots of speeches, had done much for racial reconciliation and so forth. And Booker T said, no, I'm not the greatest man. Uh, the greatest man in our country lives in the White House, referring to his friend Teddy Roosevelt. And the Confederate colonel said to him, he said, well, I used to think that he was the greatest man in our country, but ever since he invited you to dinner, I don't think so anymore. In other words, it's one of those odd stories where the Confederate colonel is admiring Booker T. Washington, but he's also expressing a very racist ideal that it's wrong for you to have dinner with a white person, especially in the White House. Eventually, Booker T. would find himself giving speeches all over the country towards reconciliation. He would find himself opposing things like segregation, which was enforced by the Supreme Court in 1896, separating black from white and really driving a further wedge against any sort of reconciliation. Still, Booker T. never stopped giving the message that the two races completely depended upon each other. And it's eventually in St. Louis that Booker T. and Teddy Roosevelt together both gave speeches about these issues. Both speeches really moved the audience. Both speeches were well delivered. At the end of both of their speeches, the governor of Missouri approached them and he said to, this, to them, he said, you are both great men. You are the greatest of our age. And that is why I'm voting against everything you stand for. In other words, the story of Booker T is not really a story that ends in great success. In fact, the story of Booker T really is a story of lost causes. Because Booker T, and in many ways Teddy Roosevelt, all the things that they stood for, they had to be willing to see them go. They had to be willing to see them fail. They both had to recognize, like we do, that all the marvelous things that we are given are only ours for a time. They're only ours to guard and to build up for a short while. And when those things pass, we cannot look to God and say, how dare you? All we can simply say is, thank you.